Hello gamers and welcome back to Solo Spelunking. And uh, first of you, uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for your support because uh, as of now I'm at 500 subscribers, which is a big milestone for me. It's halfway to the thousand subscribers I need to become a member of the YouTube partnership program because um, this is something uh, I want to do so that I can generate some revenue from this channel that will then of course in turn flow back into the channel um, to get better recording equipment, lightning, um, gaming stuff, you know the drill. So thank you all for your support and um, thanks again for joining me tonight when I continue my basically race to 500 content week. However, I am at 500 subscribers, but I will still continue to put out one video a day until and including Sunday. And then I will see what my subscriber count is. So please um, do continue to subscribe and to like and uh, to join in. And um, what I want to do tonight, I want to follow up on the video I did yesterday um, on how to play a published adventure solo. Because in this video I talked about some different techniques you could apply and one of you from the community, one of you gamers in the comments asked me if I might be able to do a play example, maybe like a one page dungeon. And I thought, well, why not? I'm happy to oblige. And in this video, and if you haven't watched it, I do suggest you do because this is the follow up video and it, it'll make more sense if you've watched the previous video, which is just called um, How to Play a Published Adventure Solo. Um, and it is a table talk video, which does not feature any gameplay, but it sets the foundation for, for this video that I'm going to do tonight. And um, yeah, so I figured why not? I will do it. I will um, play basically a one page dungeon, which is in this case now the level one of the Shadowfell Keep. So um, this is the adventure Keep on the Shadowfell and I think it was an introductory adventure for fourth edition that you could get um, or that you can get for free um, on, on the M skilled I think it is now as a PDF. And um, this is actually not a bad adventure and if we look through it you can see um, what I talked about in the video that in the first pages you can get an outline of the setting, the threat, the major antagonist, an adventure summary and the recent developments. And this sets the boundaries and gives you room for your uh, improvisation. And then it continues. Um, so there are quick start rules included here for fourth edition. Um, but then it continues with, um, yeah giving you an overview of the town of Winterhaven and in introduces you to important characters. Um, where are the character lists? Hmm. Um, questions answered. Let's see characters. Well, I don't know, but uh, here it, it gives you answers to what different characters can can answer if you ask certain questions and it describes the village. So um, this is what I suggest you you read to get the context and then you use this basically um, yeah, set out boundaries to apply the techniques I talked about in the video of altering encounters, expanding the adventure, um, randomizing things and rearranging, for example, dungeon layouts. And this is what we will do. So um, it's been a while since I've played this adventure. So I'm also not familiar with these areas here anymore and I will not read them now. Um, I would just um, read this overview about the runes of Shadowfell Keep, approaching the keep and how 
to run it and then I will apply this principle of rearranging this map basically using the areas that are there but rearranging them in a random way as if it would be a random dungeon generator and map the new dungeon on a piece of graph paper. And um, of course if I want to play this one page dungeon I do need a hero so I decide I will use my tutorial hero because this is sort of a tutorial, Alric, my agile fencer who is a fighter by class he is still level 1, so I'm using 5th edition, um, but the user also asked if these principles I talked about in the video, if they could be applied to any game system, and of course they can, it's pretty generic stuff. Um, the methods of rearranging dungeon maps um, is of course not restricted to Dungeons and Dragons 5th or 4th or whatever edition dungeons. If you play I don't know, Dungeon Crawl Classics or even Cairn that features a dungeon or um, I don't know, Shadow Dark or whatever. Any any role-playing game basically that, that features an underground environment. It could also be a modern role-playing game, maybe a Blade Runner setting where you explore an underground sewer system. You could also apply, of course, these principles there. So they're generic and not... Um, not confined to a certain system or genre, but I only play two genres, space opera, sci-fi, uh, namely Star Wars or classic fantasy. So these are basically the two main genres I play. So of course this is what I will feature most on this channel, but every once in a while I might do a one-shot. So I have played uh, Shadowrun in the past, but not solo in a group. I have played Cyberpunk in the past and I've played Vampire a few times. So I've dabbled into different systems, but those genres of Star Wars, space opera, sci-fi, and classic fantasy are the ones that I like the most. So this is why I use these as examples, basically. So, Alric, our agile fencer, of course, will venture alone. And those of you who have seen my videos already know that I'm pretty fond of the legendary character expansion that modifies a solo hero so that he can take on the challenges meant for a party. So for this um, dungeon crawl, Alric will be, of course, again, a legendary character. And um, yeah, I will probably not be able to finish the entire dungeon this evening because uh, it's late. I returned from my business trip and I'm pretty worn out. So let's see um, how far we go and uh, I might continue this tomorrow. But the goal of course is to, to show you how this principle of rearranging a dungeon map and then maybe combining it with other elements like randomizing or expanding encounters works in practice. So um, I will not go much into the details of the adventure because this is not what the focus of this video is. I will just say that I have um, reached the ruins of Shadowfell Keep, which is uh, set in the Nantir Vale setting. And um, I um, traveled there from the village of Winterhaven. And um, yeah, I have heard rumors of strange happenings there and I suspect there is some sort of cult at work here and I want to explore this uh, these unsettling rumors. So I will start in the middle of the paper and I will just start with this stairway here. So let me show you the map real quick. So this is the map of Shadowfell Keep and it is nicely um, keyed and it features 11 areas. So I combined area 9 and 10 into one area and I will roll a d10 and the number then will correspond to the area that I encounter and then I will redraw the dungeon with the different layout on my graph paper as I explore it and then when I 
enter an area, I will only then read um, what what is happening in that area. So if, if, if you do this like with an adventure you haven't played before, this still maintains some amount of surprise, even, you, even though you know what the adventure is about and, and who the main villains are. All right, so let's let's do this. So, um, and I will just uh, shorten the scale. So one square is 10 feet. So this is one square, five feet, so um, that I don't need that much room. Um, where it makes sense. Let's see the the um, the stairway. Yeah, so it'll be two. All right. So I enter this dungeon. So I got a torch in my hand. I entered this dungeon. I go down the stairs, and I arrive in the first area of the dungeon at the bottom of the stairs. So now I will get my dice out, of course, and roll a d10. And then I will see what area of the dungeon I encounter. And if I basically encounter an area where it would be a dead end, but I haven't explored the whole dungeon yet, I will just add uh, basically an exit where I can then continue to explore the dungeon. All right, so let's see. So carefully, I get my torch out. So I got one, uh, the torch in one hand, my drawn rape here in the other, and head down the stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs, it'll be area number eight. So this area here. So now I will look up area eight see um, area four so this is all nicely laid out area eight sir keegan's tomb all right so area eight is only this uh, let me check the map only this small yeah only the small room here so this entire complex is area seven so the stairs they lead to a double door and I don't know what's behind it yet. So um, I will just add a little, add a little hallway, piece of hallway here. And this will be the double door. And I don't know what is behind it yet. So now I would read the description of area eight. And, um, and then I will continue the adventure. So this, um, yeah, might might take a while now. So um, now with you watching on camera, I will probably just skim this here because it the important part is um, yeah how how to apply this technique and not to really play through the adventure. So I will just skim this and uh, see what what's happening here. All right, uh, arrive in the tomb. Shadow will keep less commander, so it doesn't look like the doors are as if they are locked the doors are uh, unlocked let's see features of the area um okay so all right so what i will do now i will examine the door and um and see if uh, if it's open and if you remember my tutorial about dungeon delving i will use my usual uh, icons so um, an open door is just a circle and uh, and then we have locked and trap which is the arrow and um, or we have um, uh, yeah locked and trapped open or i think it was just locked yeah and locked was uh, a plus sign um, all right, so um, this door is open, so I, I carefully approach and I try to open the door and it opens and now I would read, when the adventurers open the door, read. The raised days in this old crypt holds a single coffin. Carved on the lid of the coffin is a warrior in plate armor with a sword laid across his chest, the point towards his feet. All right, and now I will copy this and like I said, this 
chamber does not feature an exit. So I will just add exits. So, um, so one, two, three, four. So I will, and, um, so that'll be in my case only two. So that doesn't really fit with my scale. So I just improvise a little. All right. Like this. And like this, two instead of four. And then it goes like this. And like this. All right, and here we have this raised stairway or this little stone uh, stairway. This is like a raised platform with a coffin. So that's the coffin. So what I will do, I will just add a door here and here. So basically that I have two options. All right, so I enter this chamber really carefully and quietly. So let's give you an idea uh, how I copied this. And of course, to know what, what this area is, I will put the eight of area eight, the key in here as well, so that uh, if I need to look something up again, I can can find it. All right, so um, yeah, so I of course approach the, the coffin because I wanna examine it. Maybe there's some some treasure, some jewels maybe embedded in the stone or whatever. So, and um, yeah, I will attempt to open the coffin because maybe I figure maybe he is buried with some or whatever, maybe even a she, I don't know, uh, is buried with some um, valuables like art objects or anything. So I will lift the lid of the coffin. And I will read, when the adventurers attempt to open the coffin or start to leave without opening the coffin, read, the heavy coffin lid explodes in a flurry of dust. A humanoid skeleton girded in plate armor rises from the cloud. It holds aloft a long sword. The rift must never be reopened, it croaks. State your business or prepare to die. All right, so as I approach this um, this coffin, like described, suddenly poof, the lid bursts open and the scene happens as it is instructed. So I will talk to the skeleton. I'm not here to, to open any rifts. As a matter of fact, I don't know what you're talking about. I heard rumors about a cult operating out of this ruins and I am here to follow up on these rumors and maybe put an end to evil doings that might be going on here. But who are you <laughs> and why are you talking to me? All right, so it seems now I would read this section now talking with Keegan and, and here uh, it also states some, some questions. So I will not do this now in this video because it would take too long and would probably be, be um, too boring for you. So um, yeah, I will just um, yeah, go by the questions here. So uh, the skeleton answers. I'm Sir Keegan. I was commander here in Shadowfell Keep. It was my charge to keep the rift sealed, lest Orcus' unholy powers once again seep into the world. Yeah, you know, now as you mention it, I think Orcus was the name that I also heard when I heard rumors about this cult. And the foes I've encountered so far, they had a tattoo uh, on their arm with... Um, yeah, um, uh, a symbol that looked like the head of a demon. So OC remarks, so this is what this adventure is about. And um, 
if you you encounter enemies before you enter the dungeon and they have this tattoo so this is why i i said this all right so um yeah i will continue to to converse with with this knight and um let's see um Okay, so usually you should handle this talk with him with this guild challenge. Um, you have to succeed on four separate checks before you fail on three. And um, yeah, you would would do skill checks. So um, this would be a skill challenge um, where you have to convince the, the knight that you are basically truthful. So... I would do this, so let's assume I did this, and um, he believes me, and um, yeah, so uh, I ask him, what can I do to help you, and he goes, I'm past redemption, but perhaps I can grant you aid. I cannot leave this crypt, but Acris can. Perhaps this elegant weapon, unlike me, can be redeemed. I give it to you that you might purge Shadowfell Keep of those who work to open the rift. Seek Bahamut's boon at the altars outside, and perhaps he too will grant you aid. All right, so he gives me a plus one magic longsword. And, um, yeah, he gives it to me. It's worth a lot of money, but uh, I do not know this yet. But um, but as I touch this weapon, I can already feel the arcane might running running through me. And um, so I will take this weapon and I will use it uh, instead of my rapier. And um, yeah, use it as a one-handed Weapon. Since I'm a fighter, I am proficient with it. I'm proficient with all simple and martial weapons. So, um, yeah, so now I decide which way I go through. And I decide I go, uh, let's, let's make a, a, a rose here, north. So I decide I go east. So if you wanted to, to add some more delving elements, I could now um, try to... Yeah, let's do this. Uh, roll if this door is locked. So it's, I just give it a 50-50. Uh, so if I roll low, it is locked. If I roll high, it is open. All right, four, that is low. So I, I walk over and this door is locked. And um, yeah, so... Actually, I'm not sure about my my um, symbols because um, I I don't have my sheet with me that I did on. I think I only had locked and trapped open, and but there was a third icon. But I, I'm not sure. Da, never mind. So let's just say this plus sign means this door is locked now. All right. So since this door is locked, before I decide to 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 pick a lock, I check the other door. It is also locked. All right, and now we're already in this add expand thing. So now both of these doors are locked. So now you, if you wanted to, you could um, maybe uh, talk again with Keegan to see if he maybe has a key. So um, I will do this. Uh, it looks like that this crypt is sealed. The doors are locked. If I want to stop these cultists... Uh, I need to get through one of these doors. So do you by any chance happen to have a key? All right, let's uh, ask the game master. And I give it a 70% chance that he's got a key. 62. 
Yes, he has. So he opens uh, or he gets a necklace out that is underneath his chain shirt and it's not really a necklace it's a leather just a leather string and on this string there is um, a, a key so he hands me the key this should open the doors for you he says so i thank him i take the key and now i decide to go east and i open the door with the newly acquired key so if he uh, if the the answer would have been no i would have tried to pick the lock i'm proficient with thieves tools so now i would already have added another element to the adventure another obstacle even though it's a minor one that i needed to overcome so i will open this door and i will roll a d10 and if i would roll area eight again i would just re-roll until i roll an area that i haven't haven't encountered yet so it is six area six all right so now look at the main map i actually i wouldn't even need to look at the main map anymore um because um area six all right so this is this area here probably only this room so we will see so um i will just uh look up area six and see what area six is all right a hidden armory all right so as you can see from from this um from this map here there's an illusionary wall and um and this armory actually is is hidden all right so features of the area um, let's see a safe haven if uh, uh, overcome becomes a safe place to rest the secret door hides them gives the uh, to ambush anyone who might enter okay so um so there's a secret door the secret door leading to this chamber matches the walls in area five making it nearly invisible if the secret door is discovered it can't be opened until it is unlocked the trigger to open the wall is built into the ceiling above and anyone who looks at the ceiling can notice it with a whatever perception check. All right, so now there's a secret door. So what I will do now is I will just add a little, a little hallway piece and then I put a door here with an S, secret door. So, and now if i would of course really play this adventure as an adventure oh i got my hands dirty um i would elaborate more on 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 what i do so here i would focus on on showing the techniques so i will um then of course hmm, head towards this wall and then i will of course because it is strange that you have a locked door and only a small piece of hallway and then a wall again. So then I would, of course, it would make sense in the fiction, look for, for anything unusual. So let's do this. Let's make a perception check for the secret door. And um, I'll make it a DC 15. And um, it's wisdom plus one. I do not have perception. So let's see. 13 all right plus one that is 14 almost so um uh, i'm not sure this looks a little off so i missed by one point so um i will just um i will just give myself another chance because i only missed by one point i get the idea that something is off so i do have another chance but if i fail this one um i think that i've just imagined things so let's see Two, no ah, so I'm examining the wall mm, something seems seems off here but uh, no maybe I was mistaken hmm, maybe this part of the dungeon is not finished yet so I will still key this area area six but um, yeah I haven't discovered it and unless I get a clue now that there's something if a miss 
I would probably, if I want to stay in the fiction, not, not check this out because uh, I did it and I didn't find anything. And yeah, I think maybe the section was just not finished. So I will head over here and open this door with the key I got from, from Keegan. So now I would roll, roll again to see what area of the dungeon I discover there. Area 4. So I will just not even look at the main map. I will just go to Area 4. Area 4. Oh, the Chieftain's Lair. Oh, Area 4 is a, a larger area here. Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is the Chieftain's Lair. And yeah, I got some some copying to do. And for me, it is easy. I don't know if I I will just turn this map around and just copy this section as good as I can onto this map. So um, let's do this. So two, four, six. Right, so that's three. And then it goes down by two. And then we have one, two, three, four. Five. Then it goes by five. So um, because I only use 10 feet squared, th three, five. Then it goes up two. And one over, one down, and three squares, and three squares, and two squares, secret door. All right, so two, and then it goes down again, and then it goes over here. So mm, you don't also need really to overthink it. I will just, it doesn't really matter now. I just um, try to get the main, main thing right so all right so this is a bit larger now never mind and like this and here we have a door just put it here and then we have so this is a bit larger and on my map doesn't matter All right, and there's some some wall here in the middle. All right, and these are obviously there's a door here. There's a table here. with goblins and this is some cloth and here we have a door and this is a secret door all right so i don't need to add the the rest of the details because i don't really see them so now uh, i would read again this description and there's a battle going on here, I think. Yeah, because it's, uh, of course, the chieftain's lair. So um, I will just, uh, since I did not approach from the secret door, I will just read this passage here. Um, so um, two goblins sit at a table playing cards, their weapons close at hand. To the east, thick tapestries cover the walls. On the table between the goblins sits a small bronze bell. 
All right, so this is probably to alert um, reinforcements. All right, so, um, yeah. So now I will set up the combat encounter and would play out the combat and, um, yeah, I would um, make a stealth check to see if maybe uh, since they're playing cards, if I, maybe I'm able to surprise them. Maybe I get get around in before they can can ring the bell. Mm, so we will see how this goes. So um, yeah, so they are what? Let's see, they are goblin warriors. All right, so goblin warriors, level one skirmishers. So two of them. Um, so I will just use the the goblin stats from from fifth edition. All right. So um, I will not copy all of it again on my my sheet here. Just the this part where the combat probably will take place. So. Um, yeah, so I enter from here. Uh, six, because it's three, doesn't really matter. Then it goes down. Four. And then four. And here we have the the tapestries, and here is this um, uh, this little wall piece. So I make it like this, so that this is blocked terrain. And there's tapestry here, and then we have the wall here, and here is the table. And the goblin warriors. All right, so I will enter, or I do enter, uh, from this part here, from this door, and maybe I hear them playing cards. So um, I will, to in the spirit of um, simulating a, a play experience where you do not have much stuff using my portable gaming kit i will just use these pawns as goblins so these are goblins and now i will make a stealth check if i'm able to sneak up on them so i do have stealth because of my criminal background Four <laughs> plus five, that's nine. So that won't be enough. So um, as I open the door, um, suddenly I tip over uh, yeah, some some brass um, brass vase that was set up, maybe as some sort of alert mechanism even directly in front of the door so if you open the door you tip it over so it makes a noise hmm? and uh, the goblins are like hmm? and this goblin he looks around the corner and then he goes intruder ring the bell and now we roll initiative and I got um, plus three modifier Oh, so I'm at initiative seven and the goblins, they have plus two for their dexterity. Eleven plus two, that's thirteen. I think I was at seven. All right, so we have the goblins and then we have me, Alric. So they can go first. And they will. So they have short swords. And so this guy, he wants to to ring the bell. And this guy, um, he charges forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, he will join in shortly. So he attacks. He attacks plus four, dealing one d6 plus two on a hit. So I'm you, and he's got seven hit points. So these are basically um, basic goblin stats. And um, they have an AC of 13, wearing, no, AC, of, yeah, 13. Mm -hmm. Two plus two decks and one for their leather armor. All right, so he, this goblin, ah, he attacks. Nineteen. <laughs> Nineteen, that's a hit, but thank God not a... And he attacks and he hits for three. So I'm a legendary hero, so um, I got luckily 48 hit points, so I'm at 45 now. And since I'm legendary hero, at the end of his turn, I use one of my legendary actions. I put it here so that you can see my tokens that I use. Uh, use one of my legendary actions to make a counter attack, and I am attacking now with the um, magic longsword that deals 1d8 points of damage, 1d8 but only plus 2 because I'm using strength but I still get plus 1 because it's plus 1 so actually it's got the same stats as if I would attack with my rapier but the advantage is it's a magical weapon so if I encounter a creature with some immunities or that can only be overcome by magical weapons uh, I am in good, con good, good shape. So, um, yeah, let's roll my counter attack. And I got plus two damage because of my dueling feature. I'm only using a one handed weapon. And it's a nine plus five is 14 that hits because they have a 13 armor. And so I deal 1d8 plus five. That is six, so this <laughs> six points of damage, so this goblin is still standing because they have seven HP. <laughs> so I wound it, but uh, can't kill it. So now this goblin, so ringing the bell basically was a free action. He goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, let's... See, um, I roll a percentile dice. I ask the GM, 60% uh, chance that he's got a dagger that he can throw, so that he could attack with a with a ranged attack. 60%, 14. Yeah, so he's got a dagger. So as he is approaching me, he gets out a dagger and uh, throws it at me. However, because I'm in combat with his ally. He has disadvantage. So, and the dagger would deal 1d4 points of damage plus 2 if he, he would hit, but he attacks with disadvantage. So, got to use the lower one 6 plus 4, that is 10. No, that is not enough. My AC is 15 because of my studded leather armor and my dex modifier. Let's check this. Yes, I got black studded leather armor. But at the end now of his turn, I can do or use another legendary action. So I will again attack the wounded cobalt. Oh, 6 plus 5 is 11. That does not hit against AC, AC 13. So I miss. But now since all the goblins have acted, it is my regular turn. So at the start of my turn, my legendary actions, they refresh. And I attack with my normal attack against this goblin. I roll a three. I miss. And since I'm not using any two-weapon fighting because of my duelist feature, 
unlike um, when I was playing my board RPG hybrid, I can only make one attack. So this is it. The round is over and we start a next combat round with the goblins and this goblin right in front of me, um, he will attack. With his short sword. Oh, a three. He misses. And at the end of his turn, I will do, or I can do, a legendary action and counter attack. Um, oh, yeah, here. Oh no, 7 plus 5 is 13. Oh no, wait, that's 3, that's 10, that's 12. That misses by one point. So my legendary action counter attack misses. And now the other goblin, he uh, moves up. 1, 2. And attacks. So I'm not sure if they had pack tactics um, or not. I think. Let me just look this up real quick. In my goblin stats. All right. So um, I gotta see if they have some sort of pack tactic ability. And um, so the goblins, they have no, they have nimble escape. That was it. They can move without provoking an opportunity attack. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, nimble escape is what they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so nimble escape. So um, I didn't roll his attack yet because I was looking it up. So I will roll it now. Plus four. Yeah, even also got a short sword out. Oh, 15, that hits. And 3 plus 2, that is 5 points. So I'm down to 40 hit points. My legendary hero. But now I can retaliate, and I will retaliate, using a legendary action at the end of this goblin's turn. And um, yeah, I will still try to to finally kill this wounded goblin. Eighteen, yes, minimum damage, but that's all right because I only needed one point of damage. So um, that was my legendary action at the end of this goblin's turn and now the goblins are through now it is my regular turn so i refresh my legendary actions and now i attack this goblin with my long sword my magic long sword oh 17 all right and seven points of damage two plus five that is exactly what i need so i finish off this goblin. All right, so now I can continue exploring this area, but this goblin, he rang the bell, so um, so it was only like two or three combat rounds, so that's only like, I don't know, like 18 seconds or so, so um, if other warriors, they had to get ready, but they probably, um, uh, probably are on the move now. So let's see, um, under tactics, mm -hmm. okay, Belgrim the Fat, he's there, mm -hmm. all right, yeah, so, um, I would have to fight more goblins now, but, um, I will not do this tonight uh, or just assume that I killed them because the focus of this video is not to actually play through this dungeon at least for me but the focus is to show this technique of rearranging a dungeon map 
in progress or in practice. So let's just assume that I defeated these goblins and I will do one more um, uh, dungeon exploration, basically. So, um, yeah, um, so let's assume I, I, um, I killed them, so I will discover the secret door. So now I would once again, oh, I need to key this area that, so that I know which area it was that I do not uh, roll it again. So this is area four. So this entire area would be area four. So we have area six, eight and four. And now one other thing. If you look at this, this dungeon map here, the first dungeon map, you see that this dungeon actually has another level, the, which it goes down here to level two. And um, yeah, it is laid out in such a way that yeah, you basically have to go through a lot of areas until you reach this stairwell down. So this is something you have to decide if you say, all right, I want to, to explore or I have to explore all the areas before I could reach the stairwell or not. Um, in this case, I would probably say, um, no, you do not have to explore all the areas because there are certain parts here, like this area, which is completely disconnected, which does not have or which does not require you to to basically um, uh, explore them. You could also reach the stairway down by by not exploring them. So I would in this case say, all right, if I'm lucky and um, I do roll the stairway, I could use it. However, you see and your character knows if you still have open areas on the map. So you as a player can decide if, depending on how your resources are, if you wanted to still explore further and discover the remaining areas, maybe for the XP or the reward. But this is a little something you have to basically make up. And usually if you do this not on camera for yourself and you have time, like I said, you would read the introduction of the adventure and you also would take your time to read the area and encounter descriptions and also um, the, um, the description of how to run this dungeon. So if there would be any important quest goals that you need to complete, I think they will be spelled out and pointed out in this description. So that would also give you a clue about how far you still had to explore this dungeon. So um, this is how I would handle it in this case. So let's just, um, yeah, let's just make another roll and see what area we will discover here. And we roll an 8 again, but we already had area 8, so um, I would just re-roll. And if you don't want to re-roll, what you could also do, you could just uh, make some generic card with numbers 1 to 15, for example, and then only take as many cards as you have areas and shuffle them and just draw a card and then put it aside so you would uh, not have to re-roll and... and um, know that you could also only encounter areas that you haven't encountered yet. So 10. And to according to my legend, 10 is actually area 11 because I combined 9 and 10 to one area because it, it made sense from the layout. So um, area 11. So I would again move to area 11. Area 14, area 12. Uh, oh, this is level 2 already. So area 11, 9, area 11, the water cave. All right, so. Uh, 
this is good that this came up now um, because I, I show you why so let's just um, jot this down stairway down like this doesn't really matter and then I will op let the cave open up here and here one two three six or maybe it was not such a good idea to change the scale but never mind so like this and then here you would have the water area like so water and this is area 11 I put the key here so this is good that this happened because this is a dead end here as you can see so um, now you know if you read the adventure you know that the the quest goal is actually on the the second floor of the dungeon so from what we have explored so far we haven't found a way down however there is still the secret door which we didn't find so there is still room to explore now you have as a player in this situation have sort of a dilemma because in the fiction your character he already explored this area and he didn't find anything and he wrote it off basically but then also maybe in the fiction you know that there there got to be something here where where the cult operates so now the question is would you enter or uh, add not add uh, not enter add another exit a normal exit to this room or would you not do it and and yeah try to come up with an idea how your character might find this secret door and what i would do in this case because um you you also don't want the adventure to come to to a halt basically i will ask the gm in this case i will ask the oracle and i will give it a pretty high chance that there's a different another exit i will give it 80 percent but like i used to say always give yourself a chance to fail it is not a hundred percent sure thing so if i'm lucky 80 percent there might be another exit but if i'm unlucky this is it and then if i would really like play this adventure i would need to come up with a way or an explanation to where i have the possibility to find the secret door maybe you um i don't know you could go back to the village ask a, a cleric or ask this um this undead knight again if he knows something about it or or whatever but it it would be um yeah a different situation so now i'm asking the gm if there's still or if there's another door here and i give it 80 percent 97 and this is of course how i lucky i usually am when i play solo so but this is exactly what i mean always give yourself a chance to fail so now you there's not a, no exit so this is basically a dead end this water cave and as far as your character is concerned right now this is the dungeon but then of course i didn't read through all the encounters so maybe in this encounter i might have found something or a clue uh, that that gives me a hint that that I still need to 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 check this again maybe maybe you find a drawing of this door mechanism and these are all things that you could ask the GM and just with some some minor dice rolls again as you can see we have a situation where we do have a published adventure with set encounters and predefined enemies but still we are in a situation where it plays out completely in an unexpected way and where you have to 
Now again stretch your creative muscles to come up with a way to, to continue. And this is yeah, how basically you still have this unpredictability um, when using these techniques even though you you know the dungeon layout. So this is how this technique of, of rearranging the dungeon map would work in a practical example. And um, I will finish it here because um, I'm already almost at an hour, I guess. Yes, I am. And I have to admit I'm pretty beat from my trip. But I still want to, to talk about the other method of randomizing um, decisions because this dungeon is also pretty suited for that. So um, let's and for that you would need the um, the overview map or you would for for this method you would basically leave the map as it is and and then um, let me get my my stick out here that I usually use so I get this map a little closer to the camera so then you would leave the map as it is and the area so you would come down here and you would complete this area one description however then from this point you would have three possible options you could go this way this way or this way and in this case i would just roll a d3 one two three to randomly decide which way I go. So let's say, all right, I roll a one. A one would be this passageway. So this would lead me into this section of the dungeon. And then whenever I come across a decision point, like this triangle of doors here, or these, uh, these three doors, if I do not have an indication or clue that one way is better than the other, I would still again randomize this decision again with a d3 one two three and let's say i roll a three so that means i would first explore through this door so even though the map does not change for you it is still not really clear what area you explore next and what encounter you face next so this is basically this in reverse instead of rearranging the map and 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 redrawing the map you um randomize your character movement and now the third option that you could also do and this is also what i talked about if if this is too too much of a hassle for you as you can see it takes a while to redraw the map and everything you could do then what i did in reverse of hagenwald you would could just say all right you gotta look at theirs i have i have like two or three main encounters like this goblin chieftain encounter and maybe this knight so i will just use like a, 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 nor, a different random dungeon generator or like for convenience the expanse deck of many dungeons because it's quick but whenever there's a special room or a larger room, instead of using what is in the deck, you then use for the key encounters the descriptions from the adventure. And you could, when you explore a room, roll a die to see if you find one of the key rooms of the adventure or if it's a room as stated in the dungeon deck. So that would be um, a third method. So what I did when I played through this adventure, I did play through this adventure, but this was in the times when I was not on YouTube and I posted these sessions on my old blog. You might even find them. I don't know if they're still on my Solo Spelunking blog or if they posted them on Google Plus and they're gone now. But this is what I did. I, I randomized my, my decision of which way to follow. 
and this is how and then like for example if you end up here in a in a dead end because you have explored anything then i would backtrack and then if i only have two options available i would roll a d2 and see if i go this way or that way and depending on how lucky you are with your rolls you could just go through the dungeon in a breeze and finding all the right things or you would explore unnecessary areas so this is also what you could do so um yeah sorry that i didn't go into into much more detail this is just something i i decided on a whim that i wanted to do uh, to to give you a, a practical example of how this might work in in practice so um this is it for today's video i hope you still uh, liked it and um yeah as always thanks for watching and please keep subscribing and sharing and watching and um, i will see you again in the next video tomorrow night or tomorrow evening all right so as always stay safe and stay healthy and again thanks for watching thanks for your support and i'll catch you in the next video have a nice evening bye bye